Hello everybody, I am developer relations engineer David Jones Gilardi, and today I want to bring you through the structured output component in Langflow. So if you've been using LLMs, you've probably noticed that um, just by their nature, they're kind of creative. Their output isn't always going to be consistent. Um, and if you're working with like, say, a basic chatbot or something, that's totally fine. But a lot of times when we're trying to hook our applications up to these things, we need some kind of you know, contract, some kind of payload that we can trust is actually going to have the, the, the structure and consistency that we would expect when working with an application. That's exactly what the structured output component is for. So let's go ahead and take a look here. Okay, so this is Langflow. Langflow is a visual IDE. Uh, it's a low code system that allows you to build out Gen AI workflows. Um, now, if you're not familiar with Langflow, you're not already running it. Um, if you go to langflow.org, uh, you'll find that you can either just go to the GitHub repo and download it or pip install Langflow, or we also do host it. Uh, so DataStacks does have a hosted version. You can say get started for free um, and you can just let us handle that part for you. Okay, so once I've started Langflow, if I don't have any flows here, you're gonna see this new flow button. So I'm just gonna I can click on that. Now you're presented with all sorts of templates, right? Um, and in this particular case, I'm just gonna say start from scratch, right? We're gonna go ahead and start with the blank flow. We're gonna build out a basic agentic flow, and then we're gonna add structured output to it. So I'm gonna start both without structured output, just kind of doing the normal thing, and then we will add structured output in so you can kind of see the difference. Now, even though in this case, I'm gonna use an agentic flow, it's not a requirement. You can use the structured output component with any flow, really. Okay, let's go ahead and uh, just set the stage a little bit. We've got our blank canvas. Um, again, Langflow being a low code uh, tool, I've got all sorts of components and things that I can work with and left. I'm just gonna drag them out. So just to get started here, I'm gonna start with this chat input. Um, and like I said in a second, you know, a moment ago, um, I'm going to build out an agentic flow in this case. So I'm going to bring in an agent. Okay. And because I want to provide, uh, you know, a pretty comprehensive set of search results, I'm going to bring in this tably search. So I'm going to say something like NVIDIA. I'm going to take the output of that. I'm going to wire it up to the input of my agent LLM. And in this case, I'm just going to stick with the default of OpenAI GPT-40 Mini. I do need a key, though, to work with OpenAI. Uh, so Langflow does allow the ability to store global variables. I can store them in a credentialed form as well. And that's what I've done here with my OpenAI uh, API key. It's the same thing here with Tablet AI Search. This is what I'm going to use to power the search portion of this. So I'm just going to grab my Tablet key. And then last, I'm going to wire up my tool. So now I have this agent. Um, that is responsible for doing searches on whatever term. As a matter of fact, I'm going to give a little bit more instructions here uh, to my agent to make it a bit more capable and comprehensive in the data that it returns. Um, that, the details of that here aren't as important, um, honestly, for what we're doing right now, but just kind of sets up, sets us up a little bit. All right, and then I'm going to finally take a chat output. I'm going to wire it up to the response. So let's go ahead and... Um, build that. Now, from an application standpoint, once I have a Gen AI flow like this in place, if I hook this up to my application via the API, this would be the input. This would be what I'm bringing in from my user or something like that. And then this chat output is really going to be that payload. That's that output payload that then I would ingest in my application, right? This is the part that we're looking to massage to ensure that it's very consistent. Okay, so we saw that we had a run there, right? So if I go to my playground here, you can see that um, it went off, it did its tably search, you can see it, it did that here, but then I get this output, right? This is pretty consistent with what I might expect from an LLM uh, large language model. Now, this is nice, and again, if I'm doing like a chatbot, maybe that's okay, but if I were to run this and run this and run this, I may not be getting the same structure every time. And so this is where the structured output component really comes into place. I'm going to move this over. I'm going to say structured, again, just structured output. I'm going to bring this into play. Okay. Um, now, something really interesting about structured output um, is that it actually uses uh, an LLM to create the output. So here we're taking the output of an LLM and then using another LLM to actually create the structured output. I, I just kind of think that's kind of interesting. Um, so what we're going to do is we're going to we're going to disconnect that there. I'm going to wire up this response from the original LLM uh, into the input here. Now, the language models here, I want to point something out about this, is that not 
all LLMs support structured output. Um, however, the ones in Langflow here that you see do, but if you're using something like Olama with like say local models, not all of them may support that. So just something to check out. Um, I'm going to stick with OpenAI in this case. I'll bring it up. And again, I need to give it a key. GPT-40 mini is fine. I'm going to wire up language model to language model. Okay. Now what's going to happen, um, and, you know, is I'm going to get the output from my agent LLM and then it's going to go through here. Now, the last thing I need to do is I need to give it a structure, right? That's the whole point of the structured output um, component is you're going to give it some kind of structure. So I'm going to add one here. I'm going to go in here and say domain. I'm going to save this. And then I'm going to say something like primary company domain name. Now, this part's really important. It's the name, the description that the LLM is going to use to extract the data from the response of the original LLM and then set it to this domain field, right? So this, this part's important, what we do here, right? So I'm going to do just a couple more. I'm going to say um, LinkedIn URL, okay? And again, we're going to go ahead and grab that. And I'm going to pop that in there. And then finally, I'm going to say key features. Okay. Grab this. Now, something pretty darn cool um, here in the structured output component is that there is the ability to tell it whether or not you want um, an items in a list, right? So imagine for a second, there could be multiple items that might support things. It's like key features, that's plural, right? So there very well could be multiple features. And I'm telling the LLM in this case that in fact, I want you, if there are, I want you to create, give me a list of those, right? And then you can also, you know, change the type. You're not limited to text, but I'm just going to stick with this for now. Okay. Um, now I'm going to go ahead and run that and we'll let it do its thing. And then I'll talk about in a moment why you see this kind of red node here. This is a data node and it doesn't map to the text we'll get to that in a moment right but we're going to go ahead and take a look at our playground you can see we're doing our tabley search again so it's going to do the same search it did before right but this time it's going to funnel the results of that llm through to our structured output so i didn't wire this out to anything yet but i can look here so you can see now great check it out i have my domain my linkedin url from nvidia and the key features and you can see this is a list of items now, I mentioned a moment ago, though, that we have kind of a mismatch between these nodes. What's going on here? Well, if you think about it, this is no longer just text. This is actually a data object. So I need to parse out what I want. And then this is also the place where I'm going to create my output payload, right? And we're going to go like this. Now, I'm going to take about, I'm going to take out stuff I don't need. All right, so notice here, you see that in the curly braces, I have curly brace domain, curly brace LinkedIn URL, and curly brace key features. These map directly to the values we have created in our table, right? So whatever fields you create in your table, you can get access to those with curly braces, right? That's what we're doing here with parse data. That is going to take this and give that as a response. Now, since I've already... Um, generated all this stuff instead of rerunning the whole thing i'm just going to freeze that path this is a good way to test by the way um i'm just going to run that through because what i'm really after here is i want to see did the output match what i expected now check this out notice this company profile i've got these name value pairs for nvidia and stuff here's the linkedin address and then here are its key features so we went from having you know this this big long kind of response which is totally fine it's what i asked of the lm but now I'm able to use the structured output to pull out exactly what I want and then give it to these name value pairs. Now I'm going to unfreeze that path. Let's go ahead and choose another value. Let's, we're just going to say data stacks, go. Now again, it's going to do the same thing, right? But this time it's going to go ahead and um, run through, uh, run data stacks through here, uh, through this flow. And we should see, let's see here, we're getting our tabley search. We should see that while the results are different, the structure should be identical, right? That's the whole point of this.
And while it's running, I should also point out that in this particular case, we set it up in um, more of a markdown style, but you're not limited to that. You could do like a JSON blob or something, right? But notice here, notice now my structure is the same that we had before, but the results are different, right? So now I'm able to get this nice, consistent structured output as compared to what would be more kind of like creative and variable that I would get directly from the LLM itself. Okay, great. So that's how you use the structured output component. Again, you can add this to any of your flows when you want to ensure that you have a nice consistent output payload every time in your applications. With that, take care, everybody. Happy coding.